Here we are, on a bus in the middle of nowhere in Kyrgyzstan. We are on our way to Kruzart to meet our host family, a semi-nomadic family who will welcome us into their lives for the next four weeks. And before I forget, us refers to Ruslan, my antipreter, and myself, Melanie. And this is how our nomad journey to the north of Kyrgyzstan begins. The bus trip should last about seven hours. And the bus is not only completely full, but it's also about 35 degrees in here. But no worries. I'm just looking forward to finally meeting my host family. To be honest, I'm not really sure what awaits me there. But the more we drive inland, the more excited I get to find out. Suddenly, everything happens very quickly. The bus driver stops in the middle of the street and it appears this is where Ruslan and I need to get off. And what we see then is by far the most extraordinary welcome I've ever had. Kubat, our nomad host father, is already waiting for us with an appropriate reinforcement. Time to pack our bags onto the donkey's back and off we go to the camp. As it turns out, more members of the family have come to pick us up. You can tell straight away, hospitality is a big part of the Kyrgyz culture. So, this is my new home. For how long exactly? I'm not entirely sure yet. It all ultimately depends on the weather. Because soon, the family will travel to its second campsite, up by the Sonkul Lake. The lake lies 3,000 meter above sea level and the horses alone will help bring the livestock up there. That's not without danger, but for the Kyrgyz people it's quite normal. Because Kyrgyzstan is a country full of high mountains, located in Central Asia. Over 90% of the country is situated over 1,500 meters over sea level. So no wonder that the nomadic lifestyle has been part of the Kyrgyz culture for more than 3,000 years. It was simply the best lifestyle to survive in the extreme landscapes of Kyrgyzstan. Meanwhile, the Kyrgyz nomads have taken on the role of cattle herders. And unlike before, they now live as semi-nomads. What exactly that means and how they manage to survive with such a lifestyle that is what our host family will show us in the following weeks. Aliza is cooking dinner for the whole family. Cooking, cleaning, she's responsible for many chores and she does them every day. And that in the age of 17. But for Aliza, that's all just normal. She learned everything on her own. After the long drive and the many impressions, I'm so glad to finally eat now. Even though everything feels a little bit different, I almost immediately feel like home. That's probably because of our amazing host family and their incredibly warming welcome. And the Kyrgyz food, by the way, is absolutely delicious. <laughs> Especially here at the Nomads, since everything is fresh and homemade. 
And you can tell, everyone around the table is really hungry. That's mainly because the nomad's daily life is long and exhausting. <laughs> the family is telling me how good of a singer their youngest son is. And after a little bit of convincing, Raki decides to share his talent with us. Even though you can only get service on rare occasions in the mountains, smartphones have also been an essential means of communication in the nomadic life. My host siblings also use social media, so TikTok, Instagram, etc. are also an integral part of youth culture in the nomadic world of Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Although I don't understand much of what's going on around me yet, my first impression so far is that while this family is living a very simple life, it seems like everyone is happy with it. Plus, they all seem very close to each other. Slowly, everyone is starting to get tired. And now I understand where we will be sleeping tonight. The dinner table simply needs to be set aside, allowing Lyra to prepare our beds. Just like that, our tiny wooden house, which served as a kitchen and dining room just a moment ago, turned into our bedroom. <laughs> One part of the family sleeps with Ruslan and I here in the wooden house, while the others spend the night inside the yurt, which is the nomad tent next doors. Before we start getting deeper into the nomad lifestyle now, I would first like to properly introduce you to my host family. Kubat is my host father. You have already met him. He grew up learning the shepherd's lifestyle, in other words, the nomadic life, because his parents were also nomads. This is his wife, Lyra, my host mother. She too grew up with a nomadic lifestyle. Together, they have five children, and even a few grandchildren. Their oldest son is called Urmat. For him too, the nomad life is common practice. He is 27 years old and has a wife and a little daughter. Her name is Rosa. And I can tell you, she is one of the cutest kids I have ever met. Rosa doesn't go to school yet, which is why she is out here all summer with her grandparents, enjoying the nomadic life to the fullest. And this is Kairat, or as we call him, Khaki. He is the youngest son of my host parents. You can almost always fight him in a saddle, always keen for a joke. Khaki is 15 and therefore still goes to school. But right now, he has three months of summer vacation and during this time, he lives here at the camp and helps his family wherever he can. His sister, Aliza, is 17 and recently graduated from high school. She is currently waiting for her test scores. As soon as she gets them, she will move to Bishkek, the capital. Until then, she will continue to help her parents here in the camp, just like she has been doing it for years. Basically, Aliza has been running the household since she was 12 years old. Mm. 
After one week of living with nomads, I can say that their lifestyle is simple and exhausting. Yet, it also has a certain peacefulness. The days start very early, with almost the same routine every day. Everyone gets up between 5.30 and 6.30 in the morning and knows exactly what their tasks are. Kovat's main task is to take care of the sheep. Every morning he must let them out and guide them to the fields. For this, he first of all needs his donkey. By the way, besides their dogs, the nomads don't name their animals. Although they value their livestock a lot, they remain functional. In the summer month, my host family lives outside on their two different camps. But during winter, they live for about six months in their big house down in the village. That's the new nomad lifestyle, the so-called semi-nomadism. Rake, the youngest son, is often one of the first ones to leave the house. Because every morning he is going on the search for the family's two horse herds. In fact, nomad horses do not know fences. At night, they're moving around freely in the mountains. And when the morning comes, the herds need to be gathered and brought back to the camp. And this is Rake's task. But at first, he also needs to get his horse. Urmat and Lira have also been busy for a while now. While Urmat fetches the cattle, Lira milks them. This has to be done as early as possible, otherwise the animals get nervous. Meanwhile, Alisa takes care of the household. She puts the beds away, sweeps the floor, brews some tea and prepares the breakfast. Kobat can now release the almost 500 sheep. About 50 of them belong to my host family. The remaining ones are being taken care of by my host family for other people. During the day, the sheep run freely in the mountains. Meanwhile, Urmat herds the last cows to the camp. Just like the sheep and horses, the cows move freely. The calves, though, remain in the stable overnight and are released in the morning. The cows get milked in the mornings and evenings. The family depends on the milk, because it's a staple in the diet of nomads. It's time for Kabat to leave, as the sheep must be guided to the right piece of land. Also Rake has to hurry up. He is running late. The mares need to get back to the camp as soon as possible, so they can get milked. Since the herds can be very deep in the mountains, it can take hours to find them. So Rake has to get going. Lira has finished milking. She needs to boil the milk now, to kill the bacteria in it. From this, the family will later make clean milk, fresh cream, butter, buttermilk and cheese. But first it's time for breakfast. Alisa and Lira set the table. Cream, bread, jam and butter. Everything is homemade. On occasions the family eats cookies too. They get them from the market. And this is what a typical nomadic breakfast table looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Kubat makes it back just in time for breakfast. A quick freshen up and then he too can finally eat. Fresh bread and of course tea. Here tea is drunken like water. No matter the time of the day, tea is always a good idea. Yes. 
In the meantime, Hake is still looking for the horses. He's been riding through the mountains for an hour already. Not an easy task, as the mountains are very steep. But then finally, Hake spots the horses. Now he just has to guide them back to the camp. While doing so, he meets a fellow nomad, a neighboring shepherd. Hake almost made it back. From here it's not far to the camp anymore. In the camp, Kobat is on his way back to the sheep. While the men are all on the go now, the women stay in the camp and take care of all kinds of tasks. The list is long. MVD GMTS жана тапшырам өкөн бирөөсү да. Такыр келмей дүйм, келип турам жок. Максаттарма, ой максаттарма жечим керек да. Сугласын бе? Сугулам да анан наски ийип өгөсүн. Да. Кафен түздө кой. Although the distribution of roles amongst the nomads is very traditional, it's visible that men and women have equal rights here. For instance, as in the case in most Kyrgyz semi-nomadic families, Lira is the one managing the finances of the family. Moreover, Kyrgyz nomads increasingly establish themselves in the tourism sector. And here, it's also usually the woman who holds the reins. Finally, Rake is back since the first herd of horses is running towards the camp. At the same time, Urmat arrives with the second herd. Both need to get off their horses as quickly as possible, as the daily foal catching process starts now. What looked like pure madness to me the first few days, feels now quite normal already. Every morning, the foals have to get caught and tied up. That way, their mothers don't run back into the mountains. When the foals are tied up, their mothers stay here with them. And that's important, as the nomads need the mare's milk. Additionally, my host family explains to me that it would be too exhausting and too dangerous for the foals to run through the mountains all day long. My host family can't take that risk, as most of the animals they take care of aren't theirs. They hurt them for others. That's how they make their money. Two horses and one cow have already been stolen from my host family in the mountains. To prevent horse theft, the nomads have alpha. That's what they call their only stallion in the herd. The alpha horse is trained to protect the wild mares from horse thieves, wild animals and other dangers in the mountains. Furthermore, it's also used as an additional riding horse. With the help of alpha, 
Hacke is chasing the last foals towards Lyra. The last foals are caught and tied up and then the milking process can finally begin. No uncomplicated process with at least two people present at all times. First, the foals are drinking from their mothers. This increases the milk flow. Then Alisa and Lyra can start milking. With the nervous mares, sometimes a leg is tied up to prevent kicking. Usually my host family milks their mares five times a day. While Alisa and Lyra finish milking the horses, Hake can finally have breakfast. In between all this, a lamb was also born. Just a typical morning in the life of the nomads. Lyra and Alisa are done now and can transform the mare milk into Kimis, the Kyrgyz national drink. To do so, they ferment the milk in a wooden barrel and beat it as often as possible. And this is a family affair. Everyone entering the wooden house first has to beat the Kimis. Only Rosa is spared. She's playing with the newborn lamb. Although one could also call it torturing. I don't think she understands the difference quite yet. The fresh cow's milk from this morning has finally finished cooking and can now be processed. For this purpose, one of the most important nomadic tools comes into play. The milk centrifuge in which the boiled milk is poured and then separated. Now you have on the one side fresh and clean milk and on the other side fresh cream. The whole process usually lasts around an hour and it takes a lot of patience and strong arms. Lyra confesses that the cranking makes her always really tired. Raki, on the other hand, uses the time to play on his phone. Everyone as they want. It's time for Hake to leave again, as the cows have to be guided into the mountains. Just picking up the binoculars and he's off. In the camp, Lira and Alisa are making cheese, the so-called kurut. First, the bald cow's milk is put into a bucket and then Everything just has to be poured into a cloth. Now the whole thing is simply hung up outside, where it has to dry for several hours before it can be sold to a local trader. By the way, with the nomads, nothing is wasted. Even inedible leftovers find their use here. While Alisa is preparing lunch, Hake comes back from the cow herding. Now he finally has time for a break. Even a neighbor boy has come by to play. There are many semi-nomads around here, some of them only a few minutes away on horseback. But it is still really rare that children come by to play. Probably everyone is just too busy. Rosa, once again, does what she is not supposed to do. Since she is usually the only little child here at the camp, she often gets pretty bored. There aren't really any toys here either. 
Therefore, her biggest playmate is the cat. While Alisa prepares the carrot salad, Lira makes fresh katama bread. Both have to hurry, because the next task is already coming up. The two of them really always have something to do. In the last 30 years, the nomadic life has changed a lot. Because until 1991, Kyrgyzstan was still part of the Soviet Union. And the Soviet government tried to exterminate the original free nomadism as much as possible. But this never really worked completely. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, more and more Kyrgyz people are returning to their original, free lifestyle and become semi-nomads. But not only the nomadic life itself has changed, also many other aspects have developed a lot. Lira collects all the dirty clothes because now it's laundry time. To do so, she simply uses the river water. Meanwhile, Umat goes to fetch drinking water for everyone because the river water is unfortunately not drinkable. Well, at least not for us humans. My host family always gets their drinking water from the nearest spring. It is about one kilometer away from the camp. The water there comes fresh from the glacier and is perfect for drinking. Packed with big bottles and a ladle, someone always has to walk to the spring. And you need a lot of patience, because the water flows very slowly. Fortunately, Urmat is skilled in patience. And also Lyra is patient. Washing clothes in a nomadic way yeah. takes time. Everything is washed by hand and with only one soap, curd soap. Rosa, of course, she wants to help. In the second round, everything is then simply rinsed out with fresh river water. Simple but efficient. Slowly it's time to eat again. For lunch we usually have the same as for breakfast. But today there's also carrot salad. And that is something special, because vegetables are expensive. 
The nomads can't plant anything up here in the mountains because they move every three months. Therefore, food like vegetables have to be bought on the market. About once a month my host family has to go there, hitchhiking, because they don't have their own car. <laughs> Kobat has just come back from herding the sheep. And while he rides pretty chilled back to the camp, Rake has to hurry. Because now begins one of his daily and very important task. The kümmel selling. To do this, he must first of all clean the plastic bottles in which the kümmels will be later decayed. Rosa is helping him. My host family collects the plastic bottles throughout the winter. Even when family members from the city come to visit, they often have bags of collected, empty plastic bottles with them. So basically, it's just a Kyrgyz way of plastic recycling. Selling kümmels is a little extra income for my host family. They also sell the kümmels to traders, but above all, they sell it themselves directly to the people. After cleaning the bottles, the kümmels can now be filled into them by Rake and Lira. Rosa, meanwhile, can no longer escape her tiredness. The bag is now full of chemist bottles and Rake can ride off. Every day, Rake rides up to the road and sells 5 to 10 liters of chemist to passing cars. Until the first car stops, that can take some time. So, for now, it's all about waiting, waiting and some more waiting. But Rake tells me that he actually enjoys this quite. It's like a rest for him and gives him a break of all the hard work. Then finally, after what feels like half an eternity, the first car stops. The driver buys a one and a half liter bottle. A short time later, the next one stops and buys four bottles at once. After further long waiting, Rake has also sold the last two bottles. All in all, he was here for about two hours today. Not bad at all, because he usually sells kimmes until the early evening. The donkey has long gone ahead, so Rake has to walk back to the camp. The next task is already waiting for him. He has to find the cows in the mountains and herd them back to the camp. Meanwhile, everyone in the camp is working. To ensure that the animals are provided with enough minerals, they are sometimes given salt. But the salt has to be pounded first. Of course, Rosa wants to help, as always. The sheep have also found their way back to the camp and the family's evening routine can slowly begin. The horses have to be milked one last time for the day. Then Urmat sets the folds free. As they run, you can see that some of the horse's front legs are tied together. The nomads do this, so the mares won't run away too far.
Slowly the sun is setting, and Kobat has to herd the sheep back to their pen. While Umat is tidying up the camp, an important daily task starts. Collecting the eggs. A task that the little ones in the family can do best of all. Because only Rosa and Hake fit nicely into the chicken coop. But Rosa definitely fits in the best. Even if she's sometimes a bit afraid of the chickens, she just loves to finally be able to help. In the meantime, Rake and the cows are slowly approaching the camp. Arrived at the camp, the cows must be milked again, and the calves come back into their stable. And Rosa, of course, does her best to help also with herding the cows. Meanwhile, the sheep have to be herded and counted. To do this, the family herds them into a row. That way, they can run into their pen one after the other. This makes the counting easier. And that's how a typical day of the Kyrgyz nomads finds its end. My first impression, in nomadic life, every day seems the same. But in the next weeks, I will experience that this can also be very different. A nomad party, a massive flooding and the big fear that we can't move. All this awaits you in the next part. <laughs>